In the last stream, we were working on setting up the fission reactor from mechanism alongside a large enough dynamic tank to allow us to cool all of the fissile fuel that we're burning in this reactor so that it doesn't melt down and explode. And the plan for today's stream is going to be to set up the steam turbine for mechanism to allow us to turn all of the steam that is being generated by this fission reactor into a very large amount of power. Now, it's not really the power that we're after here. We really just need to be able to run this fission reactor for quite a long time because the real thing that we're after is the nuclear waste. As we saw in the last episode, antimatter is what we're really after because antimatter is needed to craft up the final star, which is needed to make all of the creative items and get the final creative vending upgrade. And in order to make antimatter, we need polonium, and polonium comes from nuclear waste. We also need to build a super critical phase shifter in order to be able to make the antimatter, and each of the components of the super critical phase shifter require polonium and plutonium pellets, which are both made, you guessed it, with nuclear waste. So we need quite a large amount of nuclear waste. And so we need to keep this fission reactor running for a long period of time. To do that, we have to be able to get rid of the excess steam. And whilst we could potentially just find a way to delete it, it makes sense to use it in a way that also produces a very large amount of redstone flux. So that's the plan. Between streams, I have gone ahead and duplicated our setup for fissile fuel. So over here, is the initial setup and I have basically mirrored the exact same setup right here. Really the only change that I made is I moved this pipe before we had this pulverizer kind of pumping directly into the chemical oxidizer. Now the pulverizer goes directly into the ender chest here so that we can share the sulfur dust between this chemical oxidizer and the new chemical oxidizer that is over here. It looks like we might be getting tar as a byproduct from pulverizing sulfur? We don't. I'm actually not sure how we managed to get any tar at all in there, but we can just get rid of it and uh, hope that that's not gonna be a problem going forward. This should all be good to go, and we should have, yeah, a nice amount of fissile fuel ready to go as well. And essentially, my plan is to disconnect the pipe that we set up in the last episode so that this here does not connect. We can do that by just setting the bottom here to none, and then that should stop that from ejecting, I think. And then we can get a bunch of speed and energy upgrades and we can try and make this fissile fuel setup fast enough to provide however much fissile fuel we need to this fission reactor. I've also gone ahead and extended out the Xnet system. I've added a new cable that goes all the way along, all the way around and connects up to this drawer right here that is making steel. And I think I'm also gonna take the storage downgrade out of here now to allow 2048 steel to back up in this drawer because there are just so many recipes that we need that need a lot of steel and so having a large amount of steel ready to go is going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier so in order to get the turbine up and running we need all of the things listed on this page here in varying quantities the thing that we need the most of is the turbine casing and as you can see as we go through these recipes every single one of them is steel based there is a ton of steel in here the ones that don't have steel have turbine casing which you guessed it also requires steel so i think what we are going to do is we're going to build another five by five base much like we did last time uh, but this time we're going to go probably a little bit taller than we did previously so i think what we'll do is we'll go one two three four five like that we'll then grab our building wand and we'll go two three four five like that and i'm actually thinking it might not be a terrible idea for us to go a little bigger i did crunch some numbers between streams and with the current fission reactor that we have given that it can only burn 10 millibuckets per tick of fissile fuel it's gonna take us a very long time like many hours if we want to get enough nuclear waste to build the supercritical phase shifter so i might look at making the uh, fission reactor a little bit bigger as well so that we can try and get the uh, the supercritical phase shifter a little faster and so over here maybe we'll go seven by seven so we'll do two more this way like that and then we'll try and make this fairly tall we're gonna need at least another stack or two of a turbine casing and just like with the fission reactor the edges of this are going to be made out of reactor casing and the insides are going to be made out of reactor glass now the reactor glass we did i believe teach our system Never mind, I forgot the uh, the mechanism turbine is different. That needs structural glass, not reactor glass, which thankfully I think is a little 
easier to make, although I should probably go ahead and request that some glass be made, just in case, actually, never mind, we got 217, I think we requested that in the last stream, so that's not gonna be a problem for us. Let's go ahead and make this almost as tall as we can. You know what, let's make it as tall as we can. We'll do it all the way up to the roof. This stuff is not particularly expensive, it's mostly just steel, which is mostly just iron. So we'll fill all of that in, and then we'll get a bunch of structural glass. The structural glass, just steel and glass. Again, we'll get, you know, maybe two stacks of that, although I'm certain we're going to need a little bit more than that. Again, we can use our wand here, but I think that the cobblestone wand that we currently have is probably not good enough because it can't do that many blocks. It can't. That is fine. We can afford to get ourselves a diamond wand, and with that, we should be able to right-click and put down another layer at a time until we're all the way up at the top. Nice. So that's kind of the basic layout. Let's make sure that we do fill in the top over here. Just like with the fission reactor, I assume that you could put reactor glass up here instead of turbine casing, but given that we're not really gonna see the top of it and that we are flush with turbine casing, we might as well use that. And then in the middle here, we need to get some shaft, and by shaft, I mean the turbine rotor here. This isn't too expensive, but does require a lot of infused alloys, which apparently we have, that's good to see. Now, we can't run this all the way to the top. There's only so high that we can run this, and at a certain point, we need to get a rotational complex, which I have a feeling we're not gonna be able to make, yeah, because we don't have the advanced control circuits lying around. That is completely fine. If I shift click that, enter here and click request our system, should be able to make all of the components there. And I believe you can put two turbine blades onto every shaft that you have. So every single one of these rotors, you can put two turbine blades onto. We have got one, two, three, four. I think the way this is gonna work, we're gonna have a top level that we'll come back to. And then beneath that, I believe is where the rotational complex is going to go. So I think that is gonna be the rotational complex. So I think we need two more shaft. And we have just enough alloys to make that happen. Fantastic. Let's go see if our Pretty Pipes network has managed to pull together all of the ingredients. It has indeed. Good stuff, good stuff. This is going to go down directly on top of the shaft. So right about here. And then you need to fully surround that with saturating condensers. So we need, I think, 24 saturating condensers because we've got a 5x5 five five area with one block taken out of the middle. And a 25 minus 1 is 24. So for that, we're going to need 24 buckets, so 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And then after that, we just need a bunch of steel and a bunch of tin. That is fine. Can we get 8, 16, 24? We can. Nice. So those are going to go all around this layer of the rotational complex. And then above that, this row is going to be almost empty, but we need electromagnetic coils, at least one of them. And... You can put more of these in. For now, we're going to put one in. And again, we need uh, more infused alloy here. That is fine. We can request that our Pretty Pipes network do that stuff for us. Can you get for me an energy tablet? But um, you can put more than one in. And we might end up putting more than one in. It really depends on how you construct your turbine. I believe the way it works is the more turbine blades you have, the more electromagnetic coils you need in order to, uh, to produce the maximum amount of energy. But in order to get the turbine working, you only need one, and it needs to go, I believe, somewhere on the top level that doesn't touch the rotational complex. So it can go in any of the other slots above the rotational complex so long as it doesn't touch that rotational complex. From there, we can once again get our wand to do something a little bit like that. And we're almost good to go. The final thing that I think we need for the turbine to form is turbine vent. Let me just check that doesn't form, that makes sense. So turbine vents are also not too difficult to make. They're made with iron bars and turbine casing. How many of these can we make? Can we make eight? We can. We're probably gonna want more than eight, but just to see if this works, let's throw down eight turbine vent. Oh, and of course, I'm a fool. We also need turbine blades as well, which <laughs> require even more infused alloys. That is fine. Let's quickly request a bunch of those. And once we have those, let's get a bunch of blades. Nice. So these go in onto the shaft, and you just right-click on the shaft. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. Okay. I don't think you have to put all of them on if you don't want to, but uh, we might as well. We've got the shaft space for it. So if we close that up, it's still not working. I might need more turbine vents in here. 
And then I thought that the turbine might come together without a turbine valve, but it's also quite possible that one is needed. That is all of the quests complete. Let's put a valve in right about there. That still hasn't formed, eh? Okay, let me see if I can figure out what I've done wrong here. Okay, so it turns out there were two mistakes that I made here. The first is that I was wrong about the electromagnet. It needs to be touching the rotational complex. Earlier I said that it just needs to not be touching the complex. It's the other way around. The electromagnetic coil has to touch the rotational complex. You can put as many of them down. They all have to touch each other and they have to touch the rotational complex. The second is um, potentially a problem with the quest. One key item that's missing from this list is the pressure dispersers. So here in the middle, I put down saturating condensers, these guys here. It's not what you need. You need pressure dispersers. You actually don't need uh, any saturating condensers in the turbine for it to form. Look at that. Boom. Perfect. So if we open this up, we now have a turbine. And if we click the turbine statistics tab, you'll see a couple of stats here. The first is the maximum production, which is 91.41 thousand redstone flux per tick. So almost 100 thousand redstone flux per tick that can be generated there, which is very high. However, our limiting factor is coils. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that you need one electromagnetic coil for every four blades. So if I were to make three more of these electromagnetic coils, which is going to be more easily done if I uh, once again request the energy tablets over here, one, two, three, four, that should maximize the amount of power that we can produce and also might take this up to close to 400,000 redstone flux per tick. Then there's steam flow. Our limit right now is vents. You'll see here that the maximum flow is set to 160,000 millibuckets per tick. If I were to get rid of a uh, structural glass here and replace it with another vent like that, if we open this up again, the maximum flow is now 192,000 millibuckets per tick. So that relates to over here, our heating rate. So the burn rate is the rate at which we use the fissile fuel. The heating rate is the rate at which we're burning through the water. So what we want to do is we want to grab our configurator and we want to change this from input to output coolant. From there, what we should be able to do is get some more of these pressurized tubes. I don't think that the basic pressurized tubes are going to cut it here because we're talking about uh, hundreds of thousands of millibuckets per tick. So we'll go with the ultimates if we can. Um, of course, we have to work our way through the different tiers to make this happen. Uh, we don't need many, of course. We're only going a short distance here, which was kind of the whole idea of going such a short distance. But uh, do we have what it takes? We might. I don't think we have the atomic alloy. We don't, but that is completely fine. We can, of course, request that our system make for us and atomic alloy. Whilst we wait for that, we can craft four energy tablets, which unfortunately for us do not stack, but that does allow us to make four more of these coils. And in fact, I think we only need three, right? Because we've got uh, 12 blades. So in here, if we put down another electromagnetic coil directly next to the first one, again, they do have to touch. Now, if we open this up, we should see that we're still limited on coils. We are, but then now we can produce up to 219,000 redstone flux per tick. The reason why it's gone up by more than double is because we added the vent. The amount of power you generate is based on the number of blades you have, if you have enough coils to support those blades, and then how much uh, steam you can pump through the turbine at any given time, which is determined by the number of vents. So if we go ahead and put down the last two electromagnetic coils and close this up, we should no longer be limited on coils. We're not. We're actually limited on blades, and that's because I can't math, apparently. Uh, 4 multiplied by 3 is 12. Uh, 4 multiplied by 4 would be 16. So we've got one too many electromagnetic coils in there, but there's not really any downside to having too many electromagnetic coils. And so now, if we were to grab our atomic alloy, we should be able to upgrade to the ultimate pressurized tubes, which then should allow us to very quickly and easily move all of this steam out of our fission reactor and over into our turbine, which is instantly producing that maximum 329,000 redstone flux, mostly just because of the fact that we're not actually producing steam. Like we're burning through our backlog. It's not going to keep producing that amount for very long because we're going to burn through the backlog of steam we have. But the good news is that the turbine here can hold 3.13 billion redstone flux, which is very nice indeed. So this is whirring down over here. If we turn this on, you'll see that we're heating 199,000 millibuckets per tick. So 200,000 millibuckets per tick, which is actually more than this turbine can handle, which is a little bit crazy. That does mean that we just need to put in even more of these turbine vents. Again, we've got a ton of these vents, and so we could if we wanted to just kind of fill up the top couple of layers with vents here. 
especially if we're going to increase the size of our fission reactor to burn even more fissile fuel. All right, so I filled in the top two layers with turbine vents, and in here we now have a max flow rate of 1.3 million millibuckets per tick of steam, which is a ton, and we also now have a maximum production of 2.19 million Fe per tick, which is insane, and we're not going to get that high, but if we had a fission reactor big enough to produce 1.2 million millibuckets of steam per tick, then it would be fine. Um, that would just require enough of the uh, fuel rods in here to burn enough fissile fuel. Uh, right now we're doing about 200,000, so we need about six times as many rods, so we need to be burning about 60 millibuckets per tick of fissile fuel, which means, of course, we'd have to be producing enough water and sending enough water over to cool 60 millibuckets per tick of fissile fuel, and we'd also have to be producing over here 60 millibuckets per tick of fissile fuel, which is quite a lot of fissile fuel. Either way, right now, if we turn this on and we let it do its thing, over here we're producing about 343,000 redstone flux per tick, which is a massive upgrade over what we have over here. Over here, we were doing about 500 redstone flux per tick per dynamo, which was nowhere near as much. Now, the next problem that we're going to run into, there are actually two problems that we're going to run into. The first is that we are not producing 10 millibuckets of fissile fuel per tick. Um, that is mostly due to the fact, actually, that we're not connected to any fissile fuel right now. Uh, that is fine. If we get rid of this pipe or at least start deconstructing this pipe from over here i did break something just there but i think it was just concrete that's fine if we steal a few of these pipes we should then be able to connect this up to the new fissile fuel system and then from there it's really just a case of tinkering with the speed and energy add-ons until we get to a production rate of, uh, of 10 millibuckets per tick at minimum right so let's run this all the way down to here fantastic i think that auto ejects out of the front by default it does indeed and as we saw in the last episode this is going to slowly but surely burn through our fissile fuel because it's using way more than we are producing so we need to increase our fissile fuel production that's fine let me go and request a ton of speed and energy upgrades and see if we can't make this faster we might almost certainly have to get either some more flux points or increase these cables because some of the mechanism machines, when you start increasing their speed with speed upgrades, even with energy upgrades, can start to consume a ridiculous amount of redstone flux, which is why things like the turbine produce so much power in the first place, so that you can actually run some of the mechanism machines at full speed. And just like that, we're actually out of iron ingots. I assume that's because of the steel production. I assume steel is taking all of the iron, but uh, we're actually not producing enough iron. And as I mentioned, in a previous stream, the bottleneck is actually the uh, purification chamber here. It's just not processing the iron fast enough. That is completely fine because we did have a couple of speed and energy upgrades ready to go. So we can make this a fair bit faster. And then if needs be, we can also make the crushing wheel faster as well. Although I don't know if the crushing wheel is going to be the next limiting factor. I think the next factor might be the crusher, which is actually already full up on speed and energy upgrades. So I guess the next upgrade that we would have to make to the crusher at least would be to make it into a crushing factory although that doesn't seem to be the limiting factor it looks like potentially the energized smelter is slowly backing up on iron dust but really the pulverizer is what is slowing us down like this is definitely the bottleneck there are two things we could do here we could either try adding a second pulverizer um, i can't help but notice that there are no earth charges in here which is definitely limiting our production rate let me go and take a peek over here do we not have any earth charges left we do not that could be because this here yeah has just backed up on slag i mentioned it a few times before but uh it is a problem that shouldn't be too difficult for us to fix though if we head onto the lower part of this platform all of these pulverizers and i can also take the uh, vents out of my offhand now but all of these pulverizers have space beneath them and so what we should be able to do is probably just throw down another nullifier it was optimistic to assume we'd have all this stuff ready, but we looked like we have most of it. We do. If we throw down a nullifier and we just get three low extraction modules, we can filter those extraction modules for slag, for nitre, and for snowballs, and just have all of those sent around to the nullifier to hopefully keep all of this running smoothly. All right, and just like that, we now have three low extraction modules that are all set to pull their specific byproducts out, and for the time being, they're all being deleted in the nullifier. If we end up needing any of these in the future, we can always change this up and uh, start storing those in storage drawers or something along those lines. But uh, for now, that should bring our earth charge production back online. Nice.
Nice, cool. That is indeed working, which is uh, is good stuff. Cool. So uh, down here, I did request some speed upgrades. How are we doing on iron? Is our iron making its way back in? Slowly but surely, 70 iron is not really a ton. Over here, we should soon start to see the uh, earth chargers making their way back in, and that should increase our output. But uh, yeah, I think it might not be a terrible idea for us to request a basic installer for that energized smelter just to allow it to triple up on smelting. So if we do this, and again, I never want to pick these up again, but it always thinks I do. It needs to go down like that, I believe. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, input on the right, output on the left. That is fine. Auto salt wants to be on. This is now using 600 redstone flux per tick, but that should increase our iron output substantially. And you know what? Given that we've already got the next tier of installer in the system, we must have requested it earlier in the series. I feel like we might as well take that and add it to the energized smelter as well, just to make it that tiny bit faster. And uh, I do need to keep remembering that I can uh, access everything with the uh, storage scanner. I don't need to be using the uh, pretty pipes requester, but there we go. That's going to make that even quicker and uh, should increase our iron throughput quite a bit. Um, although it does look like, yeah, the uh, electrolytic separator is now the problem. It's just not making that oxygen fast enough. This is one of those machines that really gets power hungry, the more speed upgrades that you put in it. And unfortunately, unlike basically every other machine from Mechanism, the electrolytic separator, while it accepts energy upgrades, it doesn't actually work with energy upgrades. So right now it's using 160 FE per tick. If I install one speed upgrade, that's going to take it up to 320. If I install one energy upgrade, it's still going to use 320. And no matter how many energy upgrades you put in, the amount of energy used here does not change. And so there's no point at all in putting energy upgrades in here. The reason for that is that these gases can be used in the gas burning generator. For example, hydrogen here can produce 80 FE per millibucket of hydrogen. And so if the energy usage of the electrolytic separator went too low, then it'd be far too easy to produce far too much power. Either way, we just need to get this high enough to where it is making enough oxygen for the purification chamber, which might be a fair bit more than we think. We do have the gas upgrades in there, which are reducing the amount of oxygen required. But uh, as you can see here, every time you add a speed upgrade to the electrolytic separator, the power usage doubles. It went from 160 to 320 to 640 to 1,280 redstone flux per tick. So it's already incredibly high. It's kind of barely hanging on there. And we're only at three out of eight. And it's just kind of not enough. Although actually, no, this is fine. It's not enough to run the purification chamber at full speed, but it is enough to get the crusher to back up again, which is fantastic. And now, once again, our problem is the pulverizer. So we could either add a second pulverizer or we could look at making the next tier of integral component, those being the resonant integral components, which I don't think are going to be that hard for us to make. So the resonant integral component is made, of course, with the previous tier. It requires two lumium gears, which we've seen already are not too difficult to make. We've made them already. It's just tin, silver, glowstone, and a fire charge. Alongside that, we need an improved mechanical essence, and we need four enderium ingots, which again, much like at the lumium, in this pack are not too difficult. We need three lead, one diamond dust, which we can get from a mechanism, uh, and we also need two enderpearls and another charge. And so I think we probably can just make that if we can uh, successfully hijack an improved mechanical essence, which is exactly what we got right there. Let me see. Can I drop these all back in here? Because I actually don't want to be holding those. That is perfect. That is the improved mechanical essence. Fantastic. Well, uh, hold on to that for a second. And I'll put all of these away because we can use these in the future. Just clear the inventory a tiny bit. So over here, let's see. Lumium gears. We need two lots of lumium. Do we have what it takes? We do. Fantastic. From there, we should be able to craft two lumium gears. We can indeed. Good stuff. Uh, hardened glass is something our system does know how to make, and in fact, we already have one ready to go. That is also good stuff. And then we just need, I think, yeah, the ender pearls and the diamond dust. So we need four ender pearls, and the diamond dust we can get by just crushing a diamond. Do we have a crusher over here? We do not. That is fine. We do have a crushing factory hanging around right about here. And of course, we do need two diamond dust, so let's throw a second one in there. Once we have that two diamond dust, we should be able to craft four enderium ingots. Of course, we do need to add diamond dust to the wall or just take it out of here. Although I think we are going to want to automate the production of these integral components at some point in the near future. So I feel like we might as well add it to the wall. Let's do one and two. And then we're almost ready to go. All we need to do is just steal the pre-existing integral component out of the pulverizer. And we should be able to upgrade that 
to the resonant here. Nice. Let's drop that back in. And we should see that the pulverizer is now a fair bit faster than it was previously. And again, if we can keep those earth charges coming in, this should be fine. But again, the earth charges are just getting used so fast. Let's see over here. I think we could potentially look at trying to make this faster if we can find the bottleneck. Um, the bottleneck, though, I think is just how fast we're producing these dormant effigies. I just don't think that we're making them fast enough for all of this to uh, to work efficiently. Now, I wonder if we change this. Right now, it's a low retrieval module. If I change that to a medium or a high retrieval module, I wonder if that's going to request more effigies at a time, because I think that the low retrieval module only requests one effigy at a time. Usually, the way it works with pretty pipes is that the low does one, the medium does eight, and the high does, I think, 16. And so, if we were to try upgrading the low to a medium, and then maybe even upgrading the medium to a high, we've got a ton of diamonds and redstone. It's possible that we might be able to get more of these. So, there are quite a few backed up in here. That's just because this is fully backed up on stuff. Let's take you out, let's put you in, and then let's add the effigy and let's see if that requests more of them yeah look at that we've got nine of them in here now so i think that's going to keep going until it has 16 and um, i think that should hopefully make this a fair bit faster we could also of course look at um at making other points in the chain like all of these machines here a fair bit faster as well which i think i might do let me go see if i can't request a couple of integral components to make that all just run a little more smoothly all right so those have all been upgraded with an integral component that should make them a fair bit faster and hopefully that's going to allow us to start slowly but surely backing up on earth charges we do have 64 backed up in that draw now so hopefully over here this is also backing up on them not necessarily again i think here we could potentially just increase the tier of the low retrieval module right now it's just the um the lowest tier which is not particularly great and again might just try retrieving one at a time so if we once again just try increasing that to at the very least medium but again i see no reason not to go all the way to high we can probably install that once again add the earth charge and hopefully that's just going to pull more at a time because i think what was happening previously even though we had the stank limiter here the low retrieval module will only request one at a time so it'll only send one at a time whereas i think this will request like the full batch of 16 all at once so they just all come in one go and then whenever it runs out it starts requesting more of them which gives the new ones time to get here ideally before these 16 run out it still doesn't quite work just because they take so long to get here it's better than it was for sure but i think i might just get rid of the stack limiter they can only hold 64 anyway maybe i can put the stack limiter in and set it to 64 just so it doesn't try sending more after it's full on 64 but if we put the stack limiter at 64 that should hopefully allow it to just kind of continually send more and more earth charges at the pulverizer which will hopefully allow it to stay full you'll see it's really filling up now and it's basically just going to keep requesting them and hopefully 64 is enough of a buffer to where it doesn't actually run out of them at least not anytime soon. All right, we're back to Bond Iron, which is fantastic. Let me go back to what I was doing, which is getting more speed and more energy upgrades to make all of the fissile fuel machines faster. Okay, so I've got a bunch of speed and energy upgrades here. I did request slightly too many energy upgrades, but that is fine. And so we kind of just have to work backwards here and find out where the bottleneck is currently. And by the looks of it, the bottleneck here is the rotary condensator simply due to the fact that the rotary condensator isn't connected to power. That is my bad. There we go. That is going to bring that back online. And that's going to start making the fissile fuel again. Now, of course, it's still not making enough fissile fuel to keep things running. And so again, now we need to find out where the problem lies. So it looks like we're making the uranium oxide faster than we're making the hydrofluoric acid, which I believe is what's coming from this guy here yeah it is we got a ton of uranium oxide so unfortunately i think the chemical dissolution chamber does get quite power hungry but uh, let's see we'll put in eight speed and eight energy upgrades that is going to make that a fair bit faster but the problem here is not actually the speed of the machine it's the speed of the sulfuric acid so let's take a step back here here the problem is is just the rotary condensator actually which is not getting water vapor in fast enough so you know what let's do one and two that should hopefully yeah increase the speed of water vapor tremendously and then now it looks like the problem is potentially just the speed of this guy. So we'll do one and two. That's going to start making the sulfuric acid 
hopefully a fair bit faster, but now it's not got enough energy because it needs 3,200 Fe per tick. That is why I've brought some alloys here, so we can go one and two. That should increase the power throughput, but it's still not enough, eh? Let's go and use the reinforced alloys as well. We'll go one and two. Is that enough to get the power up there? It's still not enough. That could just be, though, because we're not producing the power, actually, now that I think about it. Let us add another turbine vent to our turbine. We'll put it right on the front, right about here. Thankfully, the turbine doesn't lose any power when you brick and replace parts of it, which is very nice indeed. And then if we get another flux plug, which might be a little pricey because we need another flux block, which requires a lot of flux cores, but we do have 120 flux dust. And so if we quickly head on over to our pretty pipes terminal here, I think we should be able to request everything for the flux block. And because we used all of our power on our mechanism machines, our pipes have actually slowed down because there was no energy in the pipe pressurizer. What I've done is I've just increased the priority on the pipe pressurizer from uh, zero to five. So I've made this basically the highest priority in the network so that all of our items move around nice and fast because otherwise it was going to take an age for us to get all of the uh, flux cores that we need here in order to make the uh, flux block. There we go. There is our flux block. And do we have what it takes? If I sign that back to uh, get the flux plug. We do. Fantastic. Nice. So we can add that to the same network for the time being. There is some funkiness with power that we are going to have to address in a second. But for now, if we do that, that should give our system access to the 500 million FE that's available over here. And if we come back over here, we should see that, yeah, this guy is running nice and quick because these elite universal cables are able to move 409,000 FE per tick, which is way more than the 3,200 FE per tick the chemical infuser was requesting previously. Now it looks like the next chemical infuser in the chain is the bottleneck. We'll try and make that a little bit faster. That's going to fill up quite nicely. And where is our bottleneck now? Our bottleneck is probably this chemical infuser right here. Let's make that guy faster. That's going to make the isotopic centrifuge the bottleneck. We can make him faster. And of course, as you'd expect, that makes this over here the bottleneck. So let's do you and you, and almost certainly the next bottleneck is going to be this guy right here, so I might as well get ahead of the curve on that one and make that a little faster as well. I don't think that you can make a chemical oxidizing factory. Not all of the machines from Mechanism can be factorified, unfortunately, and so I think this is the fastest that the chemical oxidizer can go. The question is, are we producing enough fissile fuel to run this at a solid 10 millibuckets per tick? The way we can tell is by looking at the tube here, and you'll see that we are actually gaining fissile fuel in this tube, which means we are making more than we're using in the fission reactor, which is fantastic. I'm very happy to see that. Now, the next problem that we're going to run into is the turbine, because we're not using 350,000 redstone flux per tick. The reason that's a problem is because when the turbine fills upon power, as it mentions in the quest book over here, if the turbine fills upon power, then the turbine will stop using the steam. The steam will back up. It'll fill up in this tank here. And when the heated coolant tank fills up, the fission reactor starts to overheat, starts to take damage, melts down, explodes, causes a ton of radiation, which is not good for us at all. And so we need a way to kind of get rid of excess power. We could, if we wanted to build a very, very, very large uh, induction matrix. The induction matrix is a configurable multi-block structure from mechanism that allows you to store a massive amount of redstone flux, but that's kind of just kicking the can down the road because there's still a chance that if the induction matrix fills up, that the turbine will then fill up and everything will melt down. And so instead, I think we kind of just need to delete the excess power, which is going to feel very wasteful because we're going to be producing 350,000 redstone flux per tick, maybe even more if we make the fission reactor bigger. We might pass half a million redstone flux per tick, and it's possible we might be deleting 450,000 of it per tick, which is staggering. But I think it's kind of essential because, again, the core thing that we're after here isn't really the power, it's the nuclear waste. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make, I think, an energy cube that is going to kind of be a bit of a buffer for our base. So Mechanism does add energy cubes, which are kind of the lower tier version of the induction matrix. Thankfully, they're not too difficult to make. Uh, the highest tier is, of course, the ultimate energy cube, but it can hold 102 million Fe, which is nowhere near the 3 billion that the turbine can hold, but I think it's probably a good start for the time being. So thankfully, it's not too difficult to make. I think our system knows how to make almost all of this, apparently, apart from the energy tablets. That is fine. You know what? I'm going to teach the system how to make 
energy tablets real quick because they're used a lot in mechanism and I feel like our system should know how to make them. Once our system knows how to make them, we can hit request and that's going to get all of that stuff crafted. And then the future tiers are pretty easy. It's more energy tablets, it's more infused alloys. And uh, yeah, you get the idea. It's more alloys, more energy tablets, more alloys, more energy tablets. And I think it's going to be faster if I just request four of these, request four of these, and then just uh, also kind of preemptively request maybe 24 energy tablets. That's way more than we're going to need, but requesting them ahead of time allows our system to kind of preemptively make all of them. And then we should just be able to craft all the way up to the ultimate energy cube. All right, so there is the basic, and if we take everything else out here, I think we should be able to very quickly upgrade to advanced. We can, and then to elite, we can, and finally, of course, to ultimate, we can. Now, I think at this point, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get another flux plug and potentially two more flux points, which we should have in our backpack. So uh, one more flux plug should be easy. It is. And then boom, and boom. Good stuff. And the flux points we have in here. So my plan here is going to be to move this flux plug elsewhere. We're going to put a new flux plug down and we're going to put an energy cube down. Uh, let's say right about here. Doesn't really matter where we put it. And we're going to put a flux point on that, and then we're gonna put a flux plug on that. So the idea here is that all of our power is gonna come out of the turbine, it's gonna go into this ultimate energy cube, it is set to end at the top and out at the front, which is perfect, and uh, basically here I'm gonna set up a new network, and I'm gonna call it uh, Isaac Power, and we'll set that to red, sure, why not? And the password can be anything, because it doesn't matter. We'll set it to Isaac Power, and we'll set this to Isaac Power as well. And I'm gonna set the priority of this to like a thousand, just a super high number. And the reason for that is that I then want to get a resistive heater that is this guy here for mechanism. And this is basically just going to be a way for us to delete power. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to put down a flux plug onto this guy. Uh, we're going to set this as well to Isaac power and we're going to set its priority to negative a thousand like that. And so what should happen now is all of our power should go initially to the energy cube and get sent around to our system for everything in the base to use that power. Now, if there's any excess power, which there currently is, we're just going to delete it. And so in here, you'll see right now, this is using 40 FE per tick. If we set this to uh, 350,000 and click the tick, it's gonna start burning 350,000 redstone flux per tick, which again, seems incredibly wasteful, but I think is necessary in order for us to get this to work. We could have made a big induction matrix, but I don't think the induction matrix is worth the time and effort that it takes to make, because in order to make the induction matrix, you have to make induction cells and you have to make induction providers, which require lithium, which requires another chain of mechanism machines involving liquid lithium. Liquid lithium you need to make from brine in a thermal evaporation tower, which the brine is also made in the thermal evaporation tower. It's just an involved setup for power storage that I don't think we need. I think we are going to be fine producing 350,000 RF per tick passively. And so now if I click activate, we should see that basically no power stays in the turbine. The turbine is always running out of power because over here, we can see that we're burning about 340,000 of it. The other 10,000 RF per tick is going to be sent out via this guy to all of our machines to keep everything running smoothly. So now the final step of this whole setup is going to be to actually use the nuclear waste because that is now our final problem currently all of our nuclear waste is just being sent to these barrels i should point out actually that nuclear waste does decay over time i forget the rate of decay on the waste but you'll notice that this barrel here had a few thousand millibuckets in previously and now it only has four you can actually see it going down in real time here it's actually quite fast is the uh, the rate of decay it's one millibucket per tick i just googled it so yeah you can see here 62 61, 60, it's going down. And so we're producing 10 millibuckets per tick and we currently have 10 tanks. So if all of these were receiving an equal amount of nuclear waste, which it looks like they are, then we would be burning 10 millibuckets per second, which again is not the same. If we wanted to actively get rid of all of our nuclear waste just by the passive decay of waste barrels, we would need 200 nuclear barrels all evenly getting the same amount of nuclear waste because there were 20 ticks per second in Minecraft. And so 10 multiplied by 20, is 200. So uh, that would be how we could get rid of it one way. 
But again, we need it. We need that nuclear waste in order to move forward. And so for us, what we want to do is we want to take that nuclear waste and run it through one of two machines, either the isotopic centrifuge or the solar neutron activator. One gets us plutonium, the other gets us polonium. And that's because, again, if we're going to get the super critical phase shifter, which is over here, we need 60 SPS casing. We need three more SPS ports, which require SPS casing. So I think the exact number is 72 SPS casing. And SPS casing requires polonium and plutonium, the pellets you make in a pressurized reaction chamber with water, fluoride, and the gas in question. The same is true for the plutonium pellets as well. It's the gas, it's water, and it's fluoride. Once we've got enough SPS casing to actually make the supercritical phase shifter, at that point, we just have to turn all of our nuclear waste into polonium because polonium is all that's required for antimatter. And once we have some antimatter, we can then look at making the creative chemical tank here. This is going to be super useful because it allows us to get an unlimited amount of this antimatter liquid, which is going to save us a ton of time because otherwise we would need a staggering amount of antimatter liquid to make all of the antimatter required to make all of the creative items. So that's the chain of events. Next time we'll come back, we'll look at getting all of this set up because in order to get there, there are a few more steps. We have to go through and actually automate HDPE first because HDPE is required in order to make the solar neutron activator. So we'll come back, we'll automate black iron, we'll automate black HDPE, which also requires HDPE. We'll get an automation up and running for the solar neutron activator. And then from there, we can set up a super critical phase shifter, which requires a ton of power, by the way. It's going to make a light work of our 350,000 redstone flux per tick. This thing kind of works on the scale of millions, not hundreds of thousands. But uh, it shouldn't be too difficult for us to get our first antimatter pellet. Once we have the system online, we should then hopefully just be able to kind of leave it passively running in the background, producing antimatter while we look at working on the singularities, the nitro crystals, the precision mechanisms, and ultimately the final star shards. But as per usual chat, those are all problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Mechanical Mastery there.